Perez. Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. And that left Dabby's ass stranded. Sounds much like the Arsenal at the moment. They left us stranded. Hello, dear viewer, listener, people in the bath, people giving up football, and welcome to Burkett Wonderland. This is Arsenal 1. Brighton too. With me tonight, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, it's Mr. Nick in Norwich. Howdy do, D. All right, Danny. Are you miserable like me? Don't sound so upbeat about it. It's a fucking shit show. <laughs> oh, I've sworn already. Yeah, that took me uh, less than a minute to to end up swearing. No, I'm not all right. I got I laid in bed at um half past two and thought, should I really get up for this? I couldn't be really bothered to get up and do a preview show. I was, uh, I'm near the end of Star Trek Next Generation. I've only got six episodes to go. I've rewatched the entire lot. I thought I could stay in bed and watch some of that, couldn't I? Or I could go back to sleep. I thought, no, I'll do the decent thing. I'll get up and I'll entertain you beautiful bastards out there. And what fucking use was it? No fucking use at all because they didn't turn up, Nick. So quite rightly, it's it, legally, we're legally allowed to now go, not bothering, go home. Think we should? Well, we really are home. Just, just not bother doing it. Just go and watch you play some shit game on Twitch. I'm playing Avengers. Will that make cheer you up? I was watching you play Avengers last night. You were Iron Man on a bridge. I was. And then I was Hulk. And then I was a little girl for some reason. So that sounds uh, about right. I think somewhere there's a little girl in all of us trying to get out. Some more than others. Um, right, let's say hello to some of the, the mugs in the chat who have actually turned up to watch this shit show. Hello, Michael in Sweden. Hello, my, uh, Nick in Norwich. Hello, Danny, near Cambridge. That's me. Hello, Noza. Mushrooms, best way to describe the game. Paul Nell, not Neil, is there. Mr. Waffles in the uh, top left-hand corner. Is, is it raining, David? I'm sure it is. It's always raining there. Uh, if you look at the formations, the players and the changes made, the outcome is predictable. Certainly was. Humbo, Hambo Gumbo. There's, there's, uh, there's too many bees in there for me. It's, it's, it's twisting my melon, man. Noza, uh, at least these, those defeats will bring Carpenter out of the closet, Nick. What have you been saying in the ABW WhatsApp? Yeah, basically, I've blamed everything on Chris. And <laughs> well, that and Arteta getting manager of the month award because since Chris has praised him on Twitter and that, he's been absolutely dreadful. <laughs> And as Chris come back from from uh, your your criticism of his uh, change of heart, no, he's off running somewhere, and he's running some, down some short pier or something. But for him, it's a very long pier. So, oh dear, um, David, but fuck me, what a screamer from Odegaard it was. Sai is there? No ABW preview, and we lost again. I see a pattern. <laughs> Sorry, people, I've missed four shows. I missed the Sunday roast because it's Sean's graduation on Monday, and I had to get up at 6, 6 a.m. I didn't even know that such thing existed. I, we left at half past 7 a.m. Nonsense. You don't want to hear about that. So that's why I didn't do it. And then uh, I got home just in time to see us getting smashed by a Crystal Ballads. Lovely. Uh, Waffles is saying it's all my fault. I won't be missing any more games or previews or podcasts this season. Don't worry. And we have a special guest on Sunday replacing Mike. I tell you at the end of the show, stay listening, not tuned. If you don't tune, you press buttons. Stay listening. An extra special guest for the Sunday race now. Mike is away, and lots of numbers. And we think the last two games prove Arsenal have improved under Arteta. Ha ha! Oh, it's a little bit harsh. Um, so we need an emergency podcast. Every hashtag, everybody out. There you go. So you never let us down, Mister Waffles. No, sunny and beautiful. Great band. Uh, oh, Nitsu, Nitsu Nubi. I don't know what happened, but the last two games we have regressed to what we were at the start of the season. That is very true, Michael. Double dipping. If you can go watch us on Twitch, stat pads makes us look better than we actually are. Well, this shit show can't be much worse than Arsenal's. <laughs> you never know. Ah, Thunder's there. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. 
and a Nicolau says Nico could be Nicolau possibly still have players who can't handle the pressure miss lower west hi danny i saw magic mike at the game and he wasn't as pissed as the last time i saw him there hello miss west lower um are you new i don't remember seeing you here before um poor old mike maybe i should ring him up actually some other arsenal podcast will probably have the sense to ring him up and get him on live is anyone else actually on live uh, tom's doing one live sophie's doing one live it'll be on one of those two so they'll um they'll be fine uh, green man uh g man green get lacazette the fuck out get the fuck get, get lacazette to fuck and give eddie a start can't be any worse than completely invisible j rob how do i have seen the result what happened arsenal we're happened come, we're gonna come to that berg gunner stat padding here telly on youtube phone on twitch that is what we like to see thank you very much squire uh yes pronounced probably that's the same surname as uh sophie from the hybrid squad nicolau spelled slightly differently i don't even think I've, i'm watching this on my own youtube am i all my own twitch there you go i was muted on my own twitch that's the kind of quality that you're going to get here um fellow humans right nick uh the, the starting lineup when you saw that did you think oh fuck, here we go again playing Xhaka at left back how many times does one player have to play in that same position before you realize he can't play well in that position well obviously another game i mean he's been getting a lot of grief to Vara's. i think a bit unfortunately the last you know this last week because yeah we didn't have the best game against palace but who did and we know you know at the start of the season probably him uh Sambi Lukonga and um Ramsdale were our only decent three players for the first what two months of the season until we started getting it together and it just proves that say he dropped him for um when Tierney came back which makes sense I get that but he doesn't play him at all until the FA Cup and that's his first start he hasn't had any games at all he's not match fit and then he doesn't play well. So then what does Arteta do? Hmm, I haven't played him for three months and he's like not match fit at all. So I'll drop him for another three months and start him again and then take him off at half time again. So and if you want someone reliable at left back, why the hell would you pick Granite Xhaka of all people? I don't know. It sometimes makes you wonder what Arteta does. We've seen it throughout the entire history of football management. We've had our managers make decisions that us people who admittedly don't know much about football, because if we did, as I say, if we wouldn't be sat here talking to you people, I'd be managing Real Madrid. Actually, I wouldn't want to manage those. I'd be managing somewhere where well, Atletico Madrid. There you go. I'd be managing them. Lovely warm weather. Feet up, eating lots of um, cake because uh, I can afford to... Uh, to do whatever I want. It's seen like I'm starting to ramble already because I'm just doing a tweet. So my notes, uh, I didn't make many. I put Xhaka. Oh, no, that's, that's too far up. Um, Xhaka left back. Wonder how that will affect ESR as no overlapping fullback. That's my first note that I made. Well, we can see what happened when it comes to the first goal, but we'll wait for a minute. Martinelli in the 8-10 role. Will that give Lacazette, Lacazette more chances to score? Again, Nick, we saw what happened. No, it didn't. Okay. First note, I've got 20 minutes in and no one has been able to get anything going. And then uh, the next note I made is uh, we had a free... Did we have a free kick? Uh, just before the free kick, we had a corner. And then the ball was going out for a corner for us. And Jack went, uh, was trying to shield the ball and it was going a little bit too slow. So a Brighton player came up behind him. Oh, my God, did he give him a shot. A WWF-style shoulder barge knocked the bloke off of the pitch the ball went out and we got a corner and he, he got away with it did you see that yeah and or do you mean they got a corner you mean no we got a corner oh yeah. it was just before that fantastic free kick that eddie um that um saka took yeah that's a long way away i've been like depressed since then so oh dear anyway just i thought that is typical jacko it's just the game's just started and he's a uh, it must have been 23 minutes or something like that. And he got a shoulder, a really violent shoulder. Did anybody else see that? Um, formerly knows that Eddie in place of Laka, just as bad. Uh, BX Gunner, hello. Uh, Jason Nicolau. Have we got two Nicolaus here? We have. Look, that one and that one. Are you related or are you the same person? Lukonga taking shots at 2-1 down in the 92nd minute. 
I should have a t-shirt with that written on it because that was a fucking nightmare. N Nitsu says, I thought we would play three at the back with holding in the middle so Xhaka could play CDM and it's a hair. And, uh, but what do I know? That's what I said on the podcast this week, Nitsu. I said, uh, we don't need to play too defensively at home. We can have three centre backs, one of them being the ball playing one, which would have been in the middle. It would have been um, Benny Blanco in the middle, but getting the balls out almost like a kind of Italian anchor role that we used to see back in the day when um, I think it would be uh, Hullet. Hullet used to play that role when he got really old. Uh, William E says, Arteta is just a rookie manager, and that is the cost of Arsenal FC having a rookie manager. Loki's there. You can't play for five minutes in a 90 minute game and lose. Reminded me a bit, Nick, a little bit like NBA and a little bit like NFL. You might as well just skip the entire match. It's only the last five minutes where anything actually important happens, isn't it? Uh, but it was, it was it exciting enough for you at the end? I know we've just skipped right to the end of the game. We're going to rewind a little bit, but. It was exciting, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, right, I'm re I'm getting on there ready to come on and be extremely depressed like I normally am <laughs> and like have a go at everyone. And then we scored the goal and, I was, and then we started playing. I was like, oh, looks, they could be papering over some cracks here. And then they didn't paper over any cracks. Those the cracks. goalkeeper went down injured for about five minutes when no one hit him. And then they blew the final whistle. He, do he does like a, a lengthy uh, lay down during the game, doesn't he? That, quite a lot of them did. Is, uh, well, he got booked for time wasting in like the 90 second minute. I was like, yeah, that'll stop him from time wasting the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> He'll learn his lesson. Uh, no, formerly knows. Uh, I said Arteta will be out by January this year. Make that June. Is it, is it really that bad? Does he need to go, Nick? I don't think he does. We have to start all this process all over again. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't trust another process. <laughs> but, I mean, I've said it pretty much all season and since he have been in. He's a rookie manager. All the mistakes he make are all high profile. He's not learned, you know, by making these mistakes. Not just what we see on the pitch, you know, everything off the pitch, how he treats players, what he does, his transfer. You know, he is learning everything on the job and good and bad. Where would another manager make the mistakes he's making probably not but we don't know i mean they've they've decided on arteta and i think he's only got what one year left after this and mm. i don't know i don't know if they'd sack him but i don't know if they would think about offering him a new contract just yet would you danny ah oh, yes i would i've yeah. seen enough from this team and the young players at times that to show that there is something there. We're, remember, he's only two and a half years into his his tenure as manager, and the club he still had to get rid of a load of players. We've still got one more shitty load of players to dump out, and then it'd be nearly all his own players. So I, I don't I don't want to get rid of him. Not that I know that he's and I know anything that you lot don't know. You are all probably right, but I don't want to go through the new manager comes in. All those players he doesn't want, get them out. Because it, it'd probably just go, I want Martinelli, uh, Smith-Rowe, ESR, Saka and Ramsdale and maybe Gabriel. And all oh, the rest of them were gone. Then you go, oh my God, it's another three transfer windows to get rid of all the players that that he that, um, that Arteta has brought in or that are left over from the last regime. And you think, oh, don't, just stick with who we got. We're never going to win the league. And we, we can make top four. He can still make top four. We saw Man United today. We've, they had Ronaldo playing up front again, and they lost one nil away at Everton. Uh, all we've got, to, we've got to hope, Nick, that Aston Villa do a job on Spurs, and they can do. It all depends whether um, Harry turns up. I was going to say something yeah. nasty then, but I didn't. Um, oh, question then from Sai. We'll save that for later, Sai. Uh, Mr. Waffles, sure, put the second slowest play on the pitch at left back. That will end well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I should have asked you to come on today, David, with your with your grumpiness. It would have been quite funny. Uh, Thunder says, Sophie just announced she's the guest on tomorrow's Sunday roast. No, she didn't. I did ask her, but then I said, I've got Chris. But it was late when I was doing it. was 3 a.m. this morning when I was messaging her saying that I've got Chris. Maybe she misunderstood. Um, Lukonga has got... Are you watching two streams at the same time, Thunder? Uh, Lukonga has gone hiding again. His positioning is awful could have sophie and chris on that might work uh nitsu says why nketiah didn't replace laka blew my mind esr just st started getting in the game and was subbed goose 
Hello, 1066. It says, uh, what time is kickoff today? It is 5.30, so we're kicking off very soon. Waffles, Arteta is going nowhere. Bloody hell, you lot are all busy. Sai, that's what we do at Arsenal. We trust the process. Uh, Davis is going to get a new contract. William, can we compare the team management with that of Conte in terms of players met he met in the squad? Do you know what that means? Not a clue. There you go then. Uh, Gwenduzi over Laconga. Well, I think, yeah, Gwenduzi is over there. But Gwenduzi's out on loan, so we couldn't have played him today. I think that's the way it works. Yes. Oh, and it's got a long one here. We aren't good enough, or we have a manager. Um, with enough experience to compete in the Champions League, even if it is by some miracle we finish fourth. Just think Europa isn't worth all the effort. I hate the Europa League. I don't want to go for all that nonsense again. Uh, I like positive Danny. Cheers, Chris. I nearly asked you to come on the preview show, and then I remembered that it would you'd have to get up yesterday to be on in time. And William says, Arteta brought in Tavares Laconga, and I don't understand why he does not believe in them. That is a good point, Nick. Why does he bring those players in if he, like you were saying, doesn't get doesn't give him enough time. Gets five minutes here and then. And then it, they, they'll both be dropped now. I mean, Tavares is our backup left back. He plays. He starts one game, pulls him off at half time, and doesn't play him in the next game. If you're a young player, you're going to be thinking, "WTF? Why the face?" Aren't they? Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's his player now. It's not like that was. Um, oh, who did we have last year at left back? I've almost completely forgotten his name. Oh, Kalasinic. I mean, he was like sort of backup, backup left back last year. And then he, I think we eventually got rid of him in January, but he didn't play most of the season up until a couple of games before he went. But yeah, he, he wanted this guy to come in. He picked him. And like I said, the first couple of months of the season when he played when Cherney was out injured, he looked okay. He looked half decent. And mm. so you make two mistakes against, was it Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup? I think and he hooked was. him after 30 minutes because he made two mistakes. Well, bloody hell, if a player gets took off every time they make a mistake, we'd run out of subs. So that'd bring in 11 sub rule, not five sub rule for next season. And and then, like I said, he leaves him another three or four months and then he brings him in cold when he's not played anything again. And if you're going to do that for a backup left back with Tierney, who we all know he's, I say injury prone, but he is probably injury prone, isn't he? So you're going to have, you can't have a, two or three year younger left back who, you know, learn you've got to get like a more experienced player to cover him. You know, you can't expect him to come in and just like turn it on like that when he hasn't played for months. Ah, oh, there you go. I agree with you. Uh Keysby Knight been I should pre, pre I'm gonna proofread this. Oh, been meaning to ask for a while, but where did that tat happy miserable Welsh bloke go? <laughs> <laughs> he went because uh we had a bit of a disagreement, and he said, I'm leaving. So he left. Uh, Petito, if Arteta does not trust Tavares and has to play Xhaka, then Tavares should be sold. 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 Mm, this doesn't seem to be right. Roll right. Get this manager in the bin. Ah, Sen. Seni. Sen. Sen. See, I can remember your sister's name. I can't remember your name. Because I thought you were, but that's uh, him, her and her sister. S E N E, that's their surname. How would you say that? I have heard it, seen. I think I've got it. That's it. Let's move on. Shane says, Do you realise that we can finish eighth again? <laughs> Final third of the season is like boss level. You need experienced players. It's like Elder Ring. And no, I don't play Elder Ring because it looks shit. Ah, she says it's uh, C Nee. Sini, Sini, Nick, remember that because I'm going to forget in about two minutes. Uh, Petito says, I don't think Tavares is his player. Arteta said, next transfer window, we need proven quality, not potential. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> He's already kind of players that we bought he doesn't want. Nitsu says, uh, have a nice, going to cheer the villa. Cheers. Come on, the villa. We do. I do like Aston Villa. Loki says, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the three-legged elephant up front. Hmm. Three-legged. What does that mean? Does it mean Lacazette? He's even got three legs. Has he got three legs? I One don't legged. think he might play better if he had three legs. 
They might do. Uh, David Keeve says, does Arteta know how to sort out issues when we have some, some important injuries? Will Tavares ever play for the Arsenal again? And why have the kids on the bench never been tried? What's the point? That is a good question, David. I've been mentioning it on podcast for the last three or four months that the young players aren't getting the time they need. Players that we need for backup. Lukonga, Tavares, Pepe aren't coming off suit, coming on soon enough. No point bringing them on with five minutes to go because then they're not going to be match fit. I'm just boring the people that have heard me say that on the podcast, so I'll shut up. Nick, my next note is uh, 25th minute. Great free... Well, actually, it's taken us 20 minutes to get to the 25th minute. That's about right. Great free kick from Saka. Gabriel almost scored at the far post with a header. Were you up out of your seat going, go on? Was that the one he did score or the one he didn't score? Didn't score first half to our right of the screen, and we really need and nearly scored. It's fantastic, really good free kick from Saka on the far, uh, really close to the screen on our right hand side. Mm. Curled it in far post. Oh, yeah, that's the one where he put it over the bar, didn't he? Afterwards, I think, I think that's what he did. Yeah, I was because it looked like it could have been curling in, but then it didn't. So I was like, oh, that's a bit closer. We could be in there, you know. We, I think we started to play a little bit then, and, mm. and then we didn't. Ah, uh, Noza says Laka has no legs. <laughs> Have you noticed also that Saka has now added a few more things to his bag of wonders? He now takes the free kicks and the corners, and they're bloody good. Mm, medium good. I don't think they were that good today. All right, all right. steady on. Not uh, all his well, fault. None of our players were having it really had any movement in the box, did they? I mean, no one seemed to try and get the ball. I seem to miss it. I seem to miss everyone every time goes straight to the goalkeeper. Yeah, sadly. Uh, okay, kids, going to start my Saturday. Lots of honey do's to do. Honey do's? What does that mean? That's a honey do list. That's where the wife gives the husband a honey do this, honey do that list. I call it a honey do list. There you go. I didn't know that. Hit the like button, you slackers. Oh, cheers, David. Petito says, I have my nursing broads, broads, I have my nursing broads Monday and Arsenal have started my relaxation weekend for my exam. Perfect. Well, good luck with your, your nursing qualifications, Petito. My, uh, the offspring got her um, graduation on Monday, four years. Now she works in a supermarket. Well done. <laughs> it's assistant manager though, and she's earning 25 grand a year. So, and uh, isn't going to have to uh, beat children to death. Although she is, I might tell you on, on the Sunday roast, her the problem. What's that noise? Fucking I don't cares. hear anything. No, you can't. Um, yeah, Sunday roast, a couple of stories about Sean uh, shouting at the customers. Lovely. Thunder says, hit the thumbs up. Very true. If you are new, Give us a th we don't have to give us a thumbs up. We give us a thumbs down. All YouTube care about is the fact that there is some inter inter interaction with us. So a hundred thumbs up, the same as a hundred thumbs down. And if if you like it, subscribe. Not that really matters either. In fact, tell your friends. In fact, go around your neighbour's house. Go in there. Uh, in fact, no, you can do this from your home. Just get uh, get this podcast, this live show on your phone, and then uh, cast it to your neighbour's telly. All of the telly. Go to Rumbelows. Cast it to all the tellies in Rumbelows. Rumbelows still exist? Radio Rentals. I don't know. So someone kept doing that on my TV once. It was getting annoying, so I accepted it. I wish I hadn't. That was absolute pure filth. That's what you get for living too close to... Um... Ellis. Ellis. Uh, oh, good God. There's loads of messages here. Ah, oh, it's a question from Kalito. I'll say that for later. Procrastinating Womble. Everything is crap. Fire the manager, burn the stadium down, grow the invincibles from test tubes, and shout loudly until we are great again. Joe, young team, we move on. See, that's what you get when you're a Womble and you have time to procrastinate. That is exactly the answer. Doesn't matter. Young team, move on. We're never going to win the league, but we can still finish top four. We're not going to finish eighth. Sai, stop talking nonsense. Who the fuck would play? He's, he's getting around the swear filter there. Nice one, Sai. He should have done. Uh, who the fuck would play a left back in left back position? It's completely logical to play the slowest CDM as left back. <laughs> There's no explanation for that. Jesus. Last third, Mr. Epic, last 13 last season, 10 this season, still got to play Chelsea, Spurs, and Man United. We're, we're glossing over that, Mr. Epic. We don't want to know. Uh, what are you doing? It's not you. 
can hear a cat scratching at something. Fucking things. Uh, Cini, was that it? Yes, Cini. Good. Right, I'm going to imagine blue blue waves on your knee. Cini. I'm going to mess that up later. Says, uh, like father, like daughter, shouty. She did. <laughs> She, uh, give you a little snippet. She actually said to these 14 year old kids that are in there, look at me when I'm talking to you because <laughs> they were fucking around in the shop because that's the teacher and they're coming out and they did look at her and then they quietly fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael has done a uh, octopus or is that a kraken? one or the other mr epic only good point this season is we may finish higher than eighth lovely jubbly keysby bring back tappy tappy what jason or bring back um the saying tappy 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 you fuckers there you go i don't do it don't do that justice at all that's why we don't do it because that's that was jace's saying and uh, they did it perfectly adam there has to be an ultimatum for arteta it cannot be a case of whether we finish wherever we finish he can say he can say no top four is within reach. If he doesn't get top four, he has to be sacked. This can't continue. Mm, Paul's laughing. Michael is now put in. Oh, what is that? Is that an, an octopus with a walking stick or an umbrella? Could be all three. Could could well be. Paul Nell, we still have the chance to finish. Of course we do have a chance to finish top four. Arteta needs to bring back holding in the back three now. Looking back in, in retrospect in not retro but what's the hindsight it hindsightedly retrospectively nick do you think we should have played three at the back and bring in big bob well yeah i couldn't have been much worse could it and then tavares if you could have played him at left wing back rather than left back back so he wouldn't have to have spent as much time defending and then obviously it wouldn't have mattered as much if he'd have played with, you know, Smith Rowe or Martin Ellie or whoever was in front of him, who does, who, you know, who I don't know they're probably told that they don't have to cover him as much, but that would have helped him a bit more and not be exposed. And he could have changed it to five at the back, but you know, I say it's Artes's decision. And look, like I said he kept picking him at left back last season and we ended up finishing eighth. So yeah, he's not learning, is he? Learning is something he is not doing. Uh, just putting, checking our WhatsApp group. That's you taunting Chris. Uh, well and truly, James Stokes quote: "Well, will well, and he's put wheel, but he means well and truly shitting the bed." Ellis is there. Oh, Ellis is putting our chat. I think this has just highlighted how shallow our, our squad depth is. Two injuries in certain areas and quality completely drops off. See, he's had a baby and now he can't come on. Uh, Sini, I sent you some DMs and you haven't checked them. Good, because I said, did you want to do a preview show? And then I said, don't bother, I'm not getting out of bed. And luckily you didn't see either of them. So uh, there you go. Um, ah, Marley Mo says, Danny, I think you should admire Arteta. You should admire Arteta and should pack his bags. I, don't, I think even you should admire Arteta. Ah, here we go. Admit. That's close enough. Ah, right. I'm going I'm to try this again because uh, he's probably typing on his phone. Danny, I think you should admit Arteta should pack his bags. But then, Mo, Mo aren't we going to go through the same thing again of getting rid of all the players and then have rebuilding it in a different style of football? If the, if by the end of next season he's not done it, then sack him. Get rid of him. Don't renew his contract. Oh, seeing he's checking her DMs now. Yes, could have come on this afternoon. So uh, maybe go back you in time and tell us not to watch the game. When? Yeah, when's the next game? The next one is South next Saturday. Southampton three o'clock again. Nick, oh my god, I'm gonna have to drag myself out of bed. Sini, if you want next Saturday preview show, um, two p.m. Two p.m. No, one thirty p.m. And you, you're welcome to come on. Uh, Falling knows that uh, is, ah, uh, here we go. Spurs already winning. Usk, I don't even want to know. We're not talking about that. Let's pretend that we care about this and go back to it. Right, so um, here we go. Nick, 28th minute, their goal. I put, I saw that goal coming a mile off. No one is marking him. Jack is so far up the pitch, it's 4v3 at the back, and Tossard spanks it home. Then I followed that up with, Xhaka was our third highest player up the pitch. Now, 
what is the point in playing left? He's, he hasn't. He can't play as a left wing back and get all the way up the pitch and be our third most third up the pitch player if you are incapable of running back. He, he almost um, hailed an Uber. Actually, I'm going to change that. Fuck Uber. Almost hailed a London black taxi because they're the ones you should use because they're qualified. They're not scumbags. They're, they're probably not going to murder you. Let's see. Um, no, I don't know. I'm probably not. No. So uh, there you go. Sorry if there's any people in here who, uh, who have murdered people. No, I mean our Uber drivers. Um, yeah. So that goal, Nick. What, what was your instant reaction as soon as you saw that goal go in? I just thought, look, when they put it along, I'm like, where's Xhaka? Oh, nowhere near, nowhere near him. Here we go again. Obviously, Gabriel had to run over to try and cover him, which you know he did well, and they just crossed it back, and the guy just tapped it in. I mean, it was a, it was a fairly good shot, you know, for him to put it in from there. But that was just, you know. That's got to go down as an Arteta mistake more than Xhaka because what did you expect? We all knew what was going to happen when he said they was doing that. And why did he not change the formation? Or why did he not put Tavares there? And they won't ask, well, they might they might be asking him that now in the press conference. They'll probably brush it off. But I mean, for him not picking Tavares today, that's right. His his Arsenal career could be over now. Because if the manager doesn't fancy, if it's, I understand, like you say, a new manager comes in, if they don't fancy you, it is what it is. You know, you move to another club, you try again. But if someone buys you and then doesn't like, like you after, what, six months, you've pretty much had it, aren't you? Because where's he, where's he going to go now? Um, he, well, he's going to go and sit back down because a game like this, is not that hard against a, t and, and a team like Brighton who aren't in form. You're at home. You've got all the rest of your back four seem to be half decent players. I do like Cedric at right back. I think he does a job. Not as good as Tommy Ashu, but he's not as shit as people made out before he stepped in for Tommy Ashu. So you'd have thought this would be a pretty decent game for Tavares to come in and play left back and be, yeah, okay, give him 90 minutes, get him used to the team. But no, sat on the bench looking like a Wally, which is uh, no good at all. And a mistake, I think. He should have played. And then uh, it would have been, if uh, if Jack would have played, Jack would have been the person in the middle of the field that would have been marking Tossard when he should have taken, when he was trying to take that shot. Jack would have been the one putting an elbow in his face. Probably getting yeah, the also, elbow card. Well, I think, if anything, like I said, not only if, you know we're struggling at left back, we're struggling midfield with party out injured. So not only do you move Shaka from centre midfield to that, you then basically break up the midfield you've played for the last what two or three months. Mm -hmm. So not you know you lose party and then I'll take Shaka out. Then you put you know young little Sambi Lukonga in there, and I think Odegaard was sort of a, a lot oh. deeper tonight as well. I'm like, well, where did that come from? I think I'm going to replace some. Um, Thomas Party and Granite Shaka. That has actually been working the last what two months with Shaka yep. a bit more forward, which is what we've wanted since he joined Arsenal because he's never been a defensive midfielder because he's not that clever at tackling, which is why he gets sent off and booked so often. So not only did he just completely destroy left, you know, the defense, he destroyed the midfield as well. And that's where that goal come from because the bloke who like, ran in unchallenged completely through the centre of midfield. That's, you know, very similar to the second goal as well. It is. Mr. Epic makes a point here. Cedric should have played at the left, holding in the centre and Benny Blanco at right back. That's also what I said. Um, I agreed. No, no, I think John said that on the podcast. I said, just go over back three. Um, Mr. Epic says again, Xhaka, stay in midfield with Sambi. Yep. And then he follows that up with Martinelli should have played up front and Laka needs to be benched. A little bit, few stats here, people. Today we had 20 shots and let's look at in order who, who scored the most. Oh, Odegaard had four shots. Saka had three. Martinelli, Lukonga, and Ketia and Pepe had two. Xhaka, oh, uh, Gabriel had two. Xhaka, Suarez, and um, Smithrow had one. The only three players on the pitch that didn't have a shot on goal, Benny Blanco, Ramsdale, and Lacazette. Not a shot. Not even, not, I'm not yeah. asking to be on target, just a shot. Yeah, that's Nothing. what I'm saying. How have, I mean, people say, oh, he does really well and he's being played. He's a striker. He was brought in to score goals and that's the end of it. And he's not scoring goals. That's what I don't understand. He's, he's not even been, getting shots on target. I mean, he's not even shooting. Goal. 
Yeah. That's how bad it is. He's gone from not scoring to not even shooting. And yeah, but, he's been doing this what for probably a year. Yeah, he's completely died a death. And yet he still plays every week. Yeah, Tavares comes on, makes two mistakes, and he gets subbed at half time. So why does this, you know, 22 year old kid that, you know, in my opinion, he didn't do much wrong, you know, a couple of little mistakes, but, you know, that could have helped if he'd had someone helping him. But he gets, you know, subbed at half time and dropped. Yet a bloke can play, you know, all these games and not score a goal apart from he scored one penalty this calendar year. And I think, what yeah. is that? I think it's what's it called maybe two goals all season. Has got quite a few like, assists though. Got to I give don't him care that. about assists. I've never mm-hmm. cared about assists. Who cares about assists? Nobody. Yeah, just looking at it again. But you have to say we have to pick some positives out of the game. Um, their their goal we had eleven shots blocked, which is we are score we are creating chances. Erdegaard hit the post. And Ketia hit the post, much like Crystal Palace. We had three or four decent chances there. Ah, it just seems to be that people up their game, but credit to Brighton. Brighton did well. They were the better team on the day. They completely dominated us. They, uh, I mean, their Mwepu got a 9.6, a goal and, and an assist, but a 9.6 rating. Who was the, when was the last time a player came to the Emirates and got a 9.6 rating? That's Andy was having pot shots that went nowhere near the goal. Imagine if a couple of those would have been on target. Um, and even Danny Wilbeck had a good game. They all had a good game. Yeah, so, he, didn't, uh, he didn't go off injured. That's that's the first. That's the, that's the first time he's ever done that at the Emirates. Yep. Right, let's move on a little bit. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, Saka getting his usual kicking twice in two minutes. Oh, that absolutely <laughs> that says it all. I mean, because I'm still waiting for this to happen. Like I say, when Shaka got sent off a couple of years ago, well, it might have been longer than that now, because they said if you just deliberately kick some with no no attempt to play the ball, that's a red card. And he just absolutely booted him through the back of the leg. And then and I was like, well, that's a red card. How is that not a red card? And then he gives him a yellow. And I mean, even the commentator said, well, that's a, what he said, that's a strong yellow card, maybe an orange card which means they know most of the time, don't they? And I just, and then I think he's got, since he came out last week or a couple of weeks ago and says people are kicking the crap out of me, rotationally fouling me, you know, I could do with more protection from the referee. He's still getting it. And not only that, he got booked later on for diving when it wasn't really a dive or a foul. It was just a coming together. It's not like, you know, and I was sort of jumping ahead, but, you know what I'm on about, it, Danny? Yeah. He, he, it's not like he was screaming on the floor, holding his ankle like a lot of the other players who dive do. He just like, got up and then the ref booked him for diving. I just don't know. This this lad, I don't know if someone's going to end up hurting him the way it keeps going. I mean, you, if you did a compilation this season of the number of times he's been kicked, it's, I, I, there's no player that gets kicked as much as that since Jack Wilshere for us. Absolutely mm. ridiculous. Um Getting a bit dark in here. Echo, sitting room lights red. Sitting room lights red, you twat. <laughs> Fucking ignoring me. You're going in the bin. Uh, David Keefe says, "When will we see? When will ever? When will we ever see Lacazette dropped? That what does he offer? Can he not even consider other options like Pepe, Martinelli, or even Eddie? Four goals scored." One from outfield. That is true. I mean, today we saw, looking at the formation again, people and Nick, according to who scored, it says we played a 4 3 3. Smith Rowe on the left of central midfield, Lekonga in the middle, Odegaard on the right. I'm not really sure that's because they were moving around quite a lot. And then it says, and then we played three up front Martinelli left, Saka right, and Lacazette in, um, in the middle. Do you agree with that kind of lineup? Because I think at times it looked like we had uh, Odegaard and Lacongo as a two in central midfield. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then, uh, then we had either four. Martinelli or Smith Rowe playing behind Lacazette. Was that more like it? Yeah, I think um, Smith Rowe was sort of behind him and um, mm. Martinelli on the right and Martinelli on the left. So it was like a 4 2 1 3 or 4 2 3 1, so, yeah. something like that. Very but then you in the middle. Yeah, so you'd have thought with something having Smith Rowe playing behind you, 
that would have given lack that means Lacazette didn't have to do his usual drop deep, did he? Because we had Lakonga doing the holding role, Odegaard ahead of Lakonga picking stuff up. And so where Odegaard would normally play is row. Um Smith Rowe was playing. And so that means that Lacazette wouldn't have had to keep coming so deep to get the ball. But that's not what happened at all, is it? Lacazette, do we even have a look and see what kind of percentage um possession and then can go to individual players. I would say if you could find, I mean, you won't, but if you could find like his heat map, he probably played deeper than what Smith Rowe did most of the game. Lacazette, oh my God, here we go. Touches of the ball. We're not including the substitutes. The most touches was uh, White with 96, and then Gabriel with 87, Suarez with 86. And then it was uh, uh, Xhaka with 77. That shows how defensive we were. That's why we had so much possession, because I think in total we had 65% possession. And then in midfield, we had uh, Smith Rowe only touched the ball 29 times, Lakonga 73, Erdegaard 54, Martin Ellen 39, Saka 59, Lacazette touched the ball 21 times. Wow. Um, I think that's stat. I don't think he touched it that much. But I mean, if they say he did, he did. But that is that is ridiculous. What are people saying about that? Um, where we're going to get down to? Uh, we should get that striker from Barcelona. <laughs> uh, no, it says because the player who kicked Saka isn't Xhaka. Precisely. Good point, though. If that had been you, if you get all the fouls against uh, Saka this season, and then go right, what if Saka would? If what if Xhaka would have done that foul? on another player in the same way. How many red cards would Xhaka be on this season if he'd have done all them fouls? Well, how, <laughs> does, this, how does this go? One, <laughs> two, three, yellow card for Xhaka. <laughs> <laughs> no explanation, no video apology, no phone calls. Absolutely well, just, nightmare. And I remember seeing it on, um, they talked about that on oh Sky, the ref watch thing, and they just laughed. Don't you shit on my cards, had that washed. Fucking pigeons. Look <laughs> at them. Cats, assemble. No, they're just looking at them out the window. I've had the car, I've had the Merc washed for the first time since last summer. And uh, this bird's fucking sitting on it. Fucking birds. Uh, Smith Row, yeah. What's up with Smith Row lately? Is uh, Does he look a little bit like he's holding an injury or he's out of form or what is yeah. it? Because for a while he's sort of been coming on and going off, and I, I, I saw him. He got a bit of a whack in the first half, and he was holding his shin, and he was rubbing his mm. shin. I don't know if he got a bit of a whack, and that sort of went, sort of developed into maybe a dead leg later on. Because I think the same happened with um, Martinelli when he went down. He was uh, someone was helping him. It was a little like he had bad cramp. So about ten minutes to go. So I think that's why he came off. But we don't know. I mean. Um, to be honest, we don't really want to know because if we ke if they come out and say, "Oh, by the way, everyone, Sack is you know uh, Smith Rowe's really struggling, you know, with an injury at this part of his leg. It's a bit tender. Let's just put a great big X on it, on it, and they'll go out and do it." It's the same like you said with um, Jack Wilshire when they said, "Oh, he's had this big operation on his ankle because he's had a lot of kicks on his ankle and stuff like that." But pretty much every time he got into run of form. People just targeted it, didn't they? And we know they did. So you that's why see, we, hopefully he doesn't go down that road. But if Arteta's going to, you know, bring him off and then put him on the bench for a few games, hopefully he can get through it. I muted myself this time. Muted yourself. Um, you can see what Brighton's game... Look, I look more red now, don't I? You can see what Brighton's game plan was. Get the goal, and then once they're up, play for time and keep going down, and then uh, kickers. And it worked. And it worked so well, they got another goal. Ridiculous. Uh, so where were we? Have I got we're any other the, notes? Did the goal disallowed before half time? I think that's where we're up to next, didn't we? Yeah, 45 minutes. Goal! Saka with another great set piece with a corner. Martelli gets ahead to it. It goes up and over to Gabriel, who headers it back across goal. And Martinelli gets up, headers it in offside. Um, so the what they were saying was that the VAR it took six minutes to do this. The VAR kept coming back and forth, going, no matter what angle you could get to, you couldn't see where um uh, the pirate's foot was you could see i i tweeted a, a few lines on it and then someone said actually that's the goalkeeper because the goalkeeper had black socks white boots 
and um, the the pirate at their right back had uh, light bl um, blue socks, same as everybody else. And that's the only way you could tell. But if you couldn't see the position of uh, their right back, the hippie with the hair, the pirate, if you couldn't see his position, then how can you give Martinelli offside? Well, that's the word that they've been using since we've had VAR, is clear and obvious. Nobody could see. They kept zooming in. They kept going at like two or three angles. And I'm not going to sit here and say 100% he was on or offside because you couldn't see this. I mean, you could see the um, goalkeeper's foot was keeping him offside. So that's one because you have to have the goalkeeper and another player, don't you? Not just one player. So, and like I said, you could not see whether he was there. And even if you could somehow magically take the goalkeeper away. We'd have been talking fingers and toenails offside again. And, you know, like I say, all day long, that's a level goal. And after four minutes, four or five minutes, on the thing, they just went, um, we can't get a view uh, offside. And then I was like, but they didn't, I don't, they'll probably make it up later for tonight on match of the day. But they didn't put any lines or anything up because they didn't know where to put the lines because they couldn't see the player. So if it's not clear, if it's not clearly obvious that he's offside, you go with what is on the on-field decision, don't you, Danny? You do. And as you, if, if you can't prove a negative, then leave it. And I, I don't know whether that's it or not, but yeah, if you can't prove it, then but it's just yet again, VAR ruining football. Um, let's have a look and see what people are saying. It's, uh, uh, David Keith is Lacazette one of the worst strikers now that we have ever had Walcott, Bentner, maybe even Jeff, Jeffers, Jeffrey, Jeffers, Giroud looks well cast compared to this bloke. It's not fair to compare them all to, the, well, yeah, to considering we pretty much swap Giroud for, to keep Lacazette, Lacazette and buying a Bamiang. That's all yeah. we've done. And ever since then, we seem to just launch it into the box and Giroud isn't there anymore. Um, Mr. Epic says, think it was offside when they'd done the Lions. Yes, yeah, socks stood out for me, didn't for me. I'm still getting people going, eh, it was, was, was offside. So, well, fucking look, I tweeted that, yes, you can see it's the goalkeeper's socks. Besides that, Arsenal really poor today due to a thin squad. Shame because top four was in our hands. Certainly was. Noza, we're, they're making up rules as they go along. Remember, Mike Riley's in charge of the PGMOL. Fuck them. All I mean, that's the soul. biggest thing. We're, I mean, we've all said it before. Everyone says it, really. They're going to the VAR thing. I think um, Sean Massey, something, she's got married. She's got another surname now. She's a do double barrel. You look a double barrel, don't you, Danny? And I um, told Sean's mum we're never marrying her. Yeah. But like I said, they never tell, they don't tell anyone on the pitch. You know, they don't tell anyone on the tv what they're doing because at least if they came and said this is why we're doing it you know they can't hide behind that can they because now you know you know at half time and pretty much for the next hour they're going to be doing something to get some sort of line to make out that they were right and even if they aren't right they'll just they don't care because it's it's arsenal and like i said not not in fact just arsenal they never seem to get any comeuppance if they make the wrong decisions, do they? None of the goal, you know, you can have the referee constantly making wrong decisions and until they've upset someone who's pally with Mike Riley, they'll never get demoted. Absolutely not. Um, we've now had uh, three losses in our last four Premier League. Well, I say Premier League games. That's the only competition we're left in. We're holding on to that of our nails. Spurs are still winning 1-0. And Chelsea won six nil, uh, so that's a further gap. Fourth, uh, third place is out the window now. Chelsea have had a hiccup, and they've come back to it. And my next note is I uh, didn't put the minutes. Smith Rowe off for Eddie. Yeah, that will work. Eddie was unlucky, wasn't he, hitting the post? Because that's a hell of a shot. Yeah, I mean that coming at the post. I mean I was a bit. I say wound up. Whether or not Smith Rowe was carrying injury, don't know. But when you're taking off our top goal scorer this season to put someone on who hasn't scored in the Premiership all season, and you and you're losing the game, you think, what are you thinking there, Arteta? I think a lot of people were saying, you know, take off um, Lacazette, put Martinelli through the middle, or you know, or even Enketia for 
Lacazette because at least Eddie had a shot today. So he, he's basically been better than Lacazette the whole game by having one shot. Um, MRM says, Arteta's arrogance cost us. But there's a lot of autocorrects going on here. Your phones are letting you down, people, but don't worry. I'm on the case. It's not Is it arrogance though. from Arteta? No, it must be, because that's what I said to you. Some From the last um, international break, something's happened where the performances have just completely gone. I mean, you said, Danny, we, it was a bit iffy in January, but then it started clicking, and we were scoring goals left and right, having 20, 30 shots a game. Everything was going you know, fairly well. Then all of a sudden we were, you know, even though we were games in hand FC, we were fourth, about three <laughs> games in hand of Spurs, like two games in hand a Man U. And I think at one stage we were about eight or nine points ahead of Tottenham. Yeah. Now we're level on points. I know they're playing today, so we'll have another game in hand of them. But so we're gone from, you know, now we have Plus to be nine them. to minus three behind. Yeah, oh, the goal difference as well, obviously. But no, I mean, we were nine points ahead, and now yeah. we're three points behind because they're going to win today. Yeah, I'm sorry, but when if we win, if we win our game in hand, we would go level with them. Whereas before, we were ahead of them with games in hand. Yeah. So now they've made it a lot harder for themselves. But but yeah, like I said, I don't know if you know they give him manager of the month award. So I mean, everyone else <laughs> must have been really bad that month or didn't play. And yeah, they were sort of everyone was singing his praise. Like I say, Chris was singing his praise. Said, I've changed my mind, Mikel. I love you now. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna Not get quite. some shirts with our. T- <laughs> that was pretty much. I can't, I'll be honest. I only read the first tweet. I didn't read the next eighteen <laughs> I read, attacks. I read so. all of it. It wasn't just simply about that. But you, you've just been horrible to him. He, he had a very good explanation, and uh, bringing through the young players was a big part of it. And he's sticking with the young players. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not giving him grief for what he's not doing. I'm giving grief for what he is doing. Uh, making weird decisions that no one understands. When everything, that's what I'm saying. Everything seemed to be going well, and he's decided he's going to change it for whatever reason. And nine hundred two one zero says not arrogance, indifference. Arteta knows he is safe from being sacked. Yeah, I think that is. Uh... That is important. Um, and Mr. Epic says that is kind of being arrogant because he knows he can do whatever he likes. And Nosa says, I just come, can't see us beating Man United, Spurs, and a bus stop in Fulham. <laughs> uh, love that. Uh, Mike Moss, Moss, Mossley, Mosley, uh, 20 shots a game when 16th in creating chances. No. We had 20 shots today. Yeah, we had, a, we had a total of 20 shots. And of those 20 shots, four are on target. Eddie, Odegaard, Lukonga and Martinelli were the ones on target. And they only had three on target. Mwepo, Tossard and Dunk. So that's not a bad ratio for them. Hmm. Right, let's uh, let's move on to something slightly happier. Our goal. Um, oh no, less happy. Their goal. <laughs> In fact, I didn't even write anything for our goal because I remember it. 66 minutes, Brighton goal, similar to their first goal. The pirate on the left just put the ball past three of our players. They all stood there and looked at him as he passed it through to, I think it was Mwepo, who had made a run to the touchline. He got the ball and then lofted it back over to outside the edge of our books, our box. And everyone just went, oh, what? There goes the ball. What's the wonder? Oh, and then whoever it was, um, uh, no, did Mwepo... Uh, it must have been somebody else then, because I thought Mwepo was one near the touchline, lobbed it out for somebody else, and then they had a shot and went in. So it must have been the other way around. So uh, I don't know who that was. Oh, I might have been Welbeck, actually. And then Mwepo went, I'll have this. And similar goal to the first one. Uh, a, a decent half volley, would you call it, Nick? Decent yeah, goal, I mean, wasn't it? Was good one, because it was like, it was a half volley, because I think it bounced just in front of him. But he sort of side-footed it and volleyed it at the same time. You know, and I think... Is that the one um, Ramsdale got a hand on? I think he got a hand on this one. Just about, I yeah. Think. But obviously, I mean, it was past him. But that's just that's just how that's happened for some reason. And it looks even worse in slow motion when you see the ball coming over and pretty much our whole defence just ball watching. I was like, come on, everyone, get out, get out. And they were like, 
were not getting out. And like I said, ran straight through the midfield that wasn't there because Party's injured and Xhaka was playing at left back, even though he wasn't actually playing at left back. I'm not sure where mm. he was playing. So pretty much, like I said, exactly the same thing as what happened almost identical for the first one. So you think, well, what's changed? I mean, it came out the second half. I thought that um I thought there was a formation change. It looked like Shaka was going to play as a like left centre back and have Martinelli as a wing back. But then that went for about ten minutes and then that then it all changed again. But yeah, just I think we were then starting to get on, on top a bit then. And then obviously they just scored. But doesn't that always happen? I suppose the big question is what kind of um, bit of uh, Arsenal merchandise are they going to release in the next couple of days to get us over this? What, what are you going to put your money on? Well, they what was it shirts the other. I did see the other day they emailed me with a retro range of about fifty shirts from the last like ten years. All I said, like, well, I don't want to buy any more shirts. Leave me alone. So I expect there'll be shorts. I don't know stockings maybe. Wigs, Arsenal wigs. Maybe they could start selling David Luiz wigs. Probably about time for that, right? That would it would be interesting. I've got a couple of photos I'm going to share with you people before we move on to our goal. A wonderful little bit of art here from um, uh, poorly drawn Arsenal, which is at can't draw Arsenal. Um, for people at home and on the bus, first it's a it's a quadrant of pictures. First one. It's the Martinelli game of the goal that's just loud. Enhance. Second picture. Enhance. Still we can't see. Third picture. Enhance. It's just Martinelli's foot. Fourth picture. Just as I suspected, that pixel is offside. And he's put one little pixel on the end of his boot to show that he's offside. Can't draw Arsenal. Congratulations, sir. And then look at this scumbag. It's Magic Mike. Um, it's uh, Jake on uh, in the, uh, the Emirates somewhere with Lacazette and Thierry Henry. Look at them. Oh. Smug shit bags. Oh, I don't know which one I'd want to hit first. I'd probably hit Henri first for leaving us for Barcelona. And then I'd then I'd hit Lacazette and hopefully injure him so he can't play anymore. Then I'd hit Mike because Mike uh actually I can't hit Mike. He took all the green shit off my pizza for me and he couldn't hit Jake. Jake's too quick anyway, budding. Look, three great strikers and Mike. <laughs> Oh, scumbag. It'd probably be Lacazette because you'd hit him and his reactions are so slow he wouldn't notice until tomorrow that you've actually hit him. Um, MRM says, even more disrespect disrespectful to lie to the fans regarding Nuno Tavares. He said it was purely tactical last time he subbed him off, yet it seems he was trying to prove something to Nuno today. Yeah, when um, Martinelli scored, he ran up to the bench and Nuno was one of the people that he hugged, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, I don't think this is nothing to do with performance on the pitch. I think he picked him because he had to in the other game because obviously Tierney was injured. I mean, I remember the Forest game. I think he said something to Arteta. I don't know if he swore at him or under, you know, which you shouldn't really swear at your manager, Probably to not. be honest, at any any job. That's not going to end well for you if you do it. No. So I think there's, like I'm saying, this is, I think this is more off pitch, something he said rather than his performances. Because we know once you get a run of games in the in the team, he's a decent player. I mean, Arteta said that when he was playing <laughs> for the... Bless you, Danny. I think some wheeze come out. Carry on. I should have muted. Fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, the start of the season, when everyone was praising him and, Luc and Lukonga, Arteta was loving all that. And like I said, dropped him like a bad habit. Four months later... Brings him on, he wakes, makes one mistake and says something, and now he's out the team. I mean, that I understand that as you know, the manager has to have the final say. But if you're going to do that, you're going to cut your nose off to spite your face all the time. And he has done this quite a lot, Arteta. And eventually, he's going to learn well, he's learned the hard way today, hasn't he? Because both goals came from you know, the left back area. So him not picking him picking Shaq has completely backfired for him. And if we end up losing out on top four by a point, you know, you could pick it, pick on this game, couldn't you? I have to take the Europa uh, spot and develop kids next season. Hmm, possibly. Um, I was going to, was I looking at something? Or was I going to say something? 
Who knows? I do think if uh, if we had have had Europa League this season, then he would have played a few more games in that him and Sambi, to be honest. And mm-hmm. I don't think he'd have been as you know ring rusty or you know it had a lot more match sharpness and played more games for him. But obviously, because we went out of the cup the first game, and I still don't, did he did he actually really play in the in the um, league cup when we went? I think he. Stuck with Tierney a lot through that as well, didn't he? So he didn't even. I don't think he really played him in that either. I honestly don't remember. No, I don't remember either. But but normally we always, you know, or Wenger and even Emery played a lot of the reserves and kids in those competitions, which is bad if you don't win those competitions. But if it helps you in the league, it's a good thing. Yeah, just looking at him on transfer market in the League Cup, he. Um... He played three. He started three of the five games. and No, three of the six. And the sixth one, he was on the bench. Mm. So he only played half of them. Yeah, so by the time um, Tierney come back, he was on the bench. So he took him off at 35 minutes against Forest, And he took him off at half-time against Crystal Palace. That's, that's not doing the kid any kind of, kind of favours, is it? No, like I said, have you ever known at Arsenal, you know, to someone to get hooked off like that, I know Mourinho used to throw his toys out the pram, and he's been known, you know, to stamp his feet and take off. I know he t- once he took off three players after thirty minutes. I understand yeah. that, but have, I mean, I don't think Wenger ever done it. I mean, let's be honest about it. How many mistakes, you know, like Clichy and Gibbs made at left back through every season, multiple times. He never thought, well, I'll just hook him off. Because, like I said, it's basically destroyed his confidence. And what can you do? You can't go and p- play him now, can he? Because mm, that just proves true. that he's wrong to drop him in the first place. So, like I say, he's cutting his nose off to spite his face. He seems to be very... Right, you fucked up. I don't care who you are. Well, I do care who you are. You're going to be dropped. Then other players like Xhaka are constantly fucking up. Although he's been decent of late. But he he, um, he keeps them going. Um, Rudy says, hello, uh, Santos was subbed off by Wenger. Santos, people, if you go, I always say this, you go and have a look at Wikipedia. You, on the left hand, oh, my moustache is tickling my nostrils. It's been driving me nuts. Um, then you go and on the left hand side and you click on um, uh, Portuguese and he brings you up the Brazilian version of the Wikipedia for Andre Santos and you will see that he was never, ever a left back. He was at most... At least he was a left wing back. Most of the time he was a left winger. And in Brazil, I think one season he scored 14 goals in a season. He was a left wing, left left midfield, left wing winger. So, uh, yeah. And Wenger didn't even see him play when he bought him. Yeah. I think that he watched the video or something. Uh, Bue came on as the sub and was taken off. Yeah, but that was... Yeah, well, he, he was taken off for not football reasons. So, yeah, the well, fans I remember ball. that. He'd come back from a long-term injury and had to come on because, like I say, someone else got injured. And you could just tell, the s- same as Tavares, but obviously a bigger thing, he was not match fit. He was You just tell he just couldn't keep up with play, which is, you know, pretty much very similar to this. But the only difference is our fans were quite upset at that time, just decided to boo the hell out of him, didn't they, and made the lad cry. I mean, I don't think... Did you think he played as bad... I mean, to be honest, Alan, you've seen a lot of players play for Arsenal over the years, you know, longer than me. Players make mistakes. Did you think he, especially against Forrest and Monday, did he make so many mistakes that he deserved to be substituted? No, should have given him help. Should have asked the yeah. whoever was playing left wing yeah, to come Smith back and Rome help him out. Yeah, Martinelli, help him. He's getting, I mean, we're seeing it before. I mean, who was the um, right back that got absolutely torn one against um, Swansea a few years ago. He got, I can't remember, that was when they were good and they had um, Gomez and people like that. He got absolutely, like, destroyed. And, like I said, no. And he just, like, huh? Lichsteiner? No, no, it was before that. But anyway, I can't remember who he got absolutely roasted and they just Cole never, never recovered. Huh? Cole Bartley, that was another young one, centre back. Ooh. He might have been playing there. No, it was a, that was definitely a fullback. Uh, but anyway, like I said, he got roasted the whole game, and I think that was one where we lost something like three nil. And he, you know, and we said the, uh, I think that was when someone like Suarez or someone was in front of him just would not come back and help him defend. Yeah, that's it. Callum Chambers when he was playing at right back, he got absolutely 
like destroyed at that Swansea game, like all game, you know, and I want anything like that. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so let's uh, let's move on to the Odegaard goal, the only highlight of the game. Decided to well describe the goal to the boys and girls, the mums and dads, the aunts and uncles, and any cats and dogs that are listening. Well, I think um because before that um we had that was where we had the um free kick and Eddie hit the bar and it looks like Odegaard was getting angry and then I think it was just a cross ball from um Shaka to Odegaard and he just looked up and thought do you know what we've been shit the whole game I'm just gonna thack this and he did and that took a slight nick off Welbeck but I don't I mean that's hard I mean they gave him the goal so it was on target before so maybe that would have gone in before I mean to be honest how hard he hit I think if the goalkeeper would have got a hand to it have broken his hand and obviously and then it just went flying in and it was a lovely goal by the lad but unfortunately that's not really going to be remembered because that's the game we lost and I mean you said earlier about all you know Lacazette's assist well Xhaka got an assist for that do you, do you give Xhaka praise for that five yard pass across midfield probably not no hmm <laughs> But yeah, and then the sort of game fizzled out a bit, didn't it? Um, there was... Um, hold on, hold on. There's a thought coming. That's a good quiz question. When was the last time Danny Wilbeck scored at the Emirates? Today. What, for Arsenal or for... Ah, don't, don't, don't make it... Like I said to George, to Sean's mum the other day, I went, I'll see if you answer this one. How many numbers in the English numbering system begin with the letter zero oh zero oh how many numbers none <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> one no i don't understand what you just said then i thought that was a trick question no okay. how many numbers in the english language begin with the letter zero oh, there i go again see that's you confusing me Dad. this is why i fuck things up because my brain says don't say zero say O. Oh. so how many numbers begin with O? it's not a trick question uh, what is what is number how many begin with t 30 how many begin with w 100 no that's O oh, in it 100 yeah i don't know, I don't know anymore <laughs> 101 102. Yeah. What? How did we get on to this? <laughs> that just reminded me. Sean's mum said none. And then she went, oh, no, one. I said, it's an infinite number. Yeah, it could be. Now, I thought you were <laughs> saying something like a trick question. It would help if I asked the question right in the first place. people saying O instead of zero in phone numbers. <laughs> I thought that was something about that, but obviously it wasn't. Because <laughs> my brain's going, don't fucking say zero like you did last time. What did my, then what did I say? I said fucking zero. I said yeah, it twice, twice. <laughs> because I can't fucking my, my brain don't let me do these things. Uh, well, maybe uh, when when you put this out, edit it to make it so you sound a lot more smarter than you are. How dare you, sir? So uh, last couple of minutes of the game, I honestly thought that Aaron Ramsdale was going to come down and score, but oh, uh, nice. we. We, in that last few minutes, we ended up playing the ball back a few times. We ended up trying to take quick throw-ins to a player. And then the player... Oh, and actually, the first thing that happened, we took a corner. Short corner. Then the corner taker was given the ball back and he was offside. Excellent. Yeah, what kind bad. of fucking bullshit is that? You and also, can't even um, take a short corner properly. Yeah, and also, as a Ramsdale, he went and got the ball from like a cross from nothing. And yeah. he was like, right, let's do a quick counter attack. And he went to throw it out. He's like, oh, no one's interested. And he was like, oh, I'll kick it. Uh, no one's showing for the ball at all. I remember the commentator said, how bad is that? You know, you're trying to win a game the last few minutes of the game and nobody wants the ball. So I think eventually he waited for everyone to get back, including all of their players, and just rolled it out to Ben White. And I think, oh, well, that was a great counter attack, wasn't it? Broody says, we all knew that it would be difficult to get top four with our games coming up, but now it is impossible to get top four. Even the Europa League is in danger. Mr. Epic says, Arteta ball. Um, it was absolutely infuriating. One of, the, uh, one of the best things about Arsenal this season has been the way 
Oh, there's a question there from Noza. I'll add that to the list. Um, it's has been the way that when um, we want to attack, we've got Ramsdale with the ball, almost like a kind of quarterback, pinging the ball all the way down the field. We have seen so little of that. In, I mean, the number of times he used to get it and he'd boot it all the way down, I think it was length down the field and it landed at the feet of Martinelli and he'd run on and do something. Or it's usually Martinelli because he kicks with his right foot, I think. So trying to kick it out to the right is harder. So he kicks it out to the left with his right foot. And then you're thinking, oh, God, it, we've got, it looks like uh, Brighton are looking like they're going to shit the bed. Here. Yeah, ooh, all right, calm down. They're going to shit the bed here. And so what I do, I say, Ramsdale, quarterback, get the ball. Walk it out of the area, start launching the balls down into the box and try and cause a kerfuffle and get a goal. And what did they do? Fucked it around. But like I said, they took the short corner, ended up being offside. Then they went out for a throw in. They threw it back on. Then they hit one of their players and went back out again. We took another throw on and then we ended up stuck with it on the touchline, arguing with one of their players. Meanwhile, in the middle of the field, one of our players is standing there. Give the fucking ball to that person. No, short throw in. Then they end up kicking it back. Then we have to pass the ball back um, to one. I think it was uh, maybe um, Ramsdale or someone like that. I was just seeing red at that time. I thought, what the fuck are you doing? Hoof the ball down. That's what you do. In the last two or three minutes of a game, you have Ramsdale going up trying to score. You have hoofing it down, putting it in the box. None of it. Absolute fucking shit show. I would make them fucks all sit down for the next eight hours and watch that last five minutes on the loop over and over while screaming at them with a bloody megaphone. A megaphone? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Bullhorn? Makes things loud. Yeah, megaphone is you good. shout into. And I'll be screaming at them, fucking put it in the box, you fucks, and doing that over and over. It's completely unacceptable that they were just fucking around with it on the edge of the box, um, on, on the, the touchline, over and over, then passing it back. Yeah, that kind of reminds me. No confidence. Was it, I can't remember if it was last season or the, it was the last season or the season before when we were in, that was when we went out of the Europa League and we were losing with like 10 minutes to go and we were getting it and we just, we thought, well, we might as well lose two now, let's not go for it. And we didn't even bother attacking and we, just, you know, we, we were doing the same thing. If anything, we were playing like we were trying to see the game out, not to score. You know, we were you, playing like not you, to concede. You forgot to cancel your, your prime your subscription, haven't you? No, that's my that's my Amazon Prime. That costs me nothing. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Welcome. Anyone else got Amazon Prime? You want to give it to us? If you don't use it, it doesn't get done. If you do use it, we get one dollar fifty, and it's really easy to do. Now let me. I, I can tell you how to do it. Don't do it on your phone, so it doesn't let you do it on your phone, does it? Yes, you it try does. doing it on, on your my phone. phone. Huh? Yeah, it does. It does work on your phone. Does it? it didn't used to. I oh, know. Does now. Good. About fucking time. Um, Mr. Epic Overmars wins the ball, passes it to T, sides it to Bergkamp, Bergkamp goal. Yeah, that would have been nice. Rudy, even if we hadn't played Jack at left back, we still wouldn't have won the game. I agree with that. Nick, do you agree? Well, yeah, because we wouldn't have been no better in midfield with having Shaka there playing as defensive midfielder, would we? Noza says, I know it's irrelevant, but it looks like Ozil is in another contract termination talk, this time with Fenerbahce. Yep, because he's a shit. And Rudy, Spurs have all the luck in the world. Don't tell me these fucked up. Have they scored again? Oh, no, they haven't. Well, it says they haven't. Um, right, where are we up to? Uh, Eddie Lacker are out of contract, leaves us with Balogun. Hmm, I didn't look to see how Balogun got onto there. So Peterborough got a draw, a draw. Middlesbrough lost one nil at home to Hull. No, so he didn't score. Um, right, Nick, I think I think that's nearly all. We're all done. I mean, if anybody wants to use their Prime sub on on Twitch, it's only because it's free and it's free money. Don't use actual money. Never give us actual money. Never subscribe with real money. Don't do that. We don't. What about need the it. questions you start? Are we not bothering? No, we have got them. Yeah, you can ask. You can answer them if you want. All right. So what was it? So when you read uh, them, can you highlight it as you're reading it, or do I have to do it? Uh, it won't let me click anything on there. Okay, there you go. I'll, I'll put it up. Uh, okay, no, no, why don't we do that? Yeah, side of this question: Are the old Arsenal back? No, no, no. That They're knocking at the door. Oh, yeah. I mean, we could easily turn this round and go look and win the next three games, couldn't we? 
Um, what are our next three games? They are uh, Southampton away, who just got smashed six 0 at home by Chelsea. Chelsea at their place, not a chance. Man United at home, twelve thirty. Fucking twelve thirty. You absolute oh shite. That's on BT Sport as well. Oh, my God. We never win on BT Sport. Uh, so, 12.30, I'll have to get up at midday. And there'll be no preview show for the Man United one. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, well, that's just the clash of the fuck-ups, isn't it, the, that one? So, I don't know. West Ham away. They're, hopefully, they'll still be in Europe. They got a 1-1 draw at Lyon when they were down to 10 men, which was a pretty good result. Then we got, uh, we're got we at home to a resurgent Leeds. And I'm not talking about the game after that against the scum so uh i'd say uh, fucking weirdo one of my distant neighbors don't like him uh yeah so no i don't, don't think they are back but i think they are they're they're, they're like zombies you it's like you're playing call of duty zombies they're scratching at the windows banging at the doors trying to get in <laughs> fuck i hated that all right next one Next question, if you click it, Carlito Elguna. If Arsenal do do not make top four this season, should Arteta be sacked? No. You? No, I don't. Yeah. Oh, do you want to carry on, or is that just a no? No. Just no. Yeah, I'd <laughs> say no. But I, if we don't make top four this season, I would not offer him an extension to his contract yet. Because That's fair. If it as I mean, we sort of talked about that earlier, if we when we had top four sort of in our hands with games in hand, and for him to sort of bottle that the way he has, not to blame Arteta for everything because obviously players have got to take responsibility as well as that, but it's not sending out the right message to reward someone when you failed like that. You see what I mean? So I, I think our, especially, can you just imagine that we get into the summer, we have, you know, Lacazette's gone gone to Barcelona on a free, and Ketty has gone to, 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 somewhere else on a free. Oh, it? Yeah, but or wherever, that's probably his level. <laughs> and we get like a week before the end of the, se- the start of the season, we still haven't signed a striker. We've been linked with everyone from Benzema to Patrick Glover. And then we come out, oh, Arsenal are making a big announcement today. And we're like, here it comes. The striker, Arteta signed a new four-year deal. Oh, God, they're gonna go, they would go absolutely mental at the first home game, wouldn't they? Well, there you go. Um, Archangel says, uh, at least the North London derby won't be stressful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Rudy says, Spurs have actual actually strikers. We don't. Archangel says we are in. Nice to see you back, Archangel. And uh, Saints, Chelsea, the next couple of games. Rudy, no chance against Spurs. West Ham, Chelsea, not even Newcastle. We want. We won't win there. Yeah, Newcastle on a bit of a roll. Um, Mr. Epic, that's true. Magpies will give us a game. Rudy, no, he shouldn't be sacked because there isn't an, an alternative. That's another problem. Plus, people are asking me, and I have no idea who to get as manager. I could pick people. I could say managers' names, but I don't know if it would work. Um, Mr. Epic, if he gets lower than seventh, he should be sacked. Rudy, when we are playing Spurs, it is all done. When, when we are playing, yeah, that's right. And Noza, by then, will have missed out on Sari, Conti, Tuchel, Ten Hag, just to make name a few. All right, Nick, next question. Yeah, so from formerly Noza, should Cedric take more free kicks? Uh, yeah, he had one in the second half, didn't he, that looked kind of good. No, I like Saka. Saka's the future for free kicks. The more he takes, Saka and Erdegaard. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind him take, taking them, you know, not like to try and score goals, but he's decent, you know, if it was longer range. I'd rather have him, you know, if we're 30, 40 yards out, I'd rather have him, you know, float across into the box than Saka because if Saka does that and it heads down on the edge of the box, that's where I want Saka to be shooting. I don't want him to be 30 yards back, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, I'd rather have... Cedric take them further out, but obviously, once you get within shooting reins, like Saka, Odegaard, Lacazette can sod off. I don't want him taking any. Well, he can't. He doesn't take a shot. So, what's the point of him taking a free kick? But, but I, I do like Cedric. He's another one where he played pretty good last season, 
towards the end of the season, probably one of our most consistent players. And then Tommy Ash, who came in this season, yeah, he's probably a better player than him. He's the newer player and he's done really well. But, but you know, for four or five months of Tommy Ashu playing really well, all of a sudden Cedric became crap and people were talking about it as a liability. I thought, well, he hasn't played. You know, I don't know how sometimes absent make the heart grow fonder and in football sometimes absent, you know, it works the other way. Makes the heart grow no fonder. Non-fonder. Right. That, that doesn't sound as good, though. Doesn't. Uh, next question from that one. <laughs> What's that? Archangel. What sort of fucking mushroom starts Xhaka at left back, then moves Martinelli there half time? I've no it's a idea. Mushroom with nice hair, isn't it? Right. Next one. Uh, him again. Uh, how good would Martinelli be if he had a proper manager? Now, that is. Uh... Because you look back at the history of Martin Elliott at Arsenal, and he has been dropped so many times. He probably would have had a load more games. He might have um, improved a little bit more than he already is. I think he's on track to be a really decent player. But every, he's, he's one of those players where if everyone else is having a bad game, you can't rely on Martin Elliott to be the one that is going to bring the whole team up. It's more of a team effort. They all need to be playing well at the same time. Because... Would it be fair to say we don't have any real leaders on the pitch, influential leaders? We don't have a, a, a oh, we don't have a, a a Vieira kind of thing in midfield, or a Tony Adams at the back, or or, or an Ian Wright that's not necessarily going to be a captain, but is going to get get the get the passion going. Not yet, but we need one of. Uh, I don't know if someone can grow into that, like a Ben White, Gabriel, or whoever, if someone can grow into that, or whether you're just naturally born with that sort of thing. I mean, it's weird. Uh, um, Lacazette was the captain today, and unless uh, like he put it on underneath his shirt, I couldn't see the captain's armband on him. I noticed that. Yes, yeah, I noticed I thought, that in the first half. Yeah, because I looked at that, and I thought, has he made Jack a captain again? Yeah. And then I looked on my phone, and that said, no, Lacazette's captain. I think and it I must looked, have thought, slipped and yeah, gone under it. Well, that's what I'm hoping, but mm. obviously he's not taking his captain responsibilities <laughs> that much if he can't even put the armband on properly. Got a quote here from Rudy. on our Arteta says, The first half was really poor again. The reaction we wanted to show, we didn't make it happen. We didn't show any purpose. It's a fucking understatement. Archangel, I spied Tommy was on the bench. Well, he was in the pit crew, not on the bench. Was he on the bench? No. <laughs> I don't know. That said, he was still injured on my app thing, but... No, he wasn't. We had Swanson, Aziz is back from his loan. We had Big Bob, Hutchinson, Tavares, Leno, El Nenny. I mean, why isn't El Nenny getting a chance in midfield? Yeah, I, I was surprised El Nenny wasn't playing, you know, next to Lukonga and then play Odegaard up front or, you know, where Smith Rowe is and you know, I've either bring Smith Row on or start Smith Row on. The left, I was really surprised that you would play a player out of position. Well, as two players he played out of position. He played a centre half, a centre midfield at left back, and then he played a number ten sort of attacking midfielder a lot deeper. And then he's not, you know, he's, he's got players on the bench that could definitely do a job there. Uh, or was he chilling on the bench? Uh, um, knows uh, Erdegaard might be the only one that has that. You would think so, but even he, I mean, it's the, the, quite a few times they zoomed in on Lacazette and showed his face, and it was like he'd been sent to the shops by his missus to get a load of stuff that he didn't know what aisle it was on. Yeah. I think so, Danny. I mean, let's say if you're injured, should you still not be there anyway? I think you should do. The whole team should be there. Yeah, I, mean, you, you can, I mean, you can't play, but at least you can support and cheer him on. And not just that. I mean, he's probably thinking, you know, Cedric's doing quite well there. Eh? I might not walk back into this side. I better remind Arteta, like, Mikel, I'm, I'm nearly fit. Don't forget me. You know, that's, that's what I'm, I'm not saying they should be, you know, if you've got a broken leg and you're out for six months yeah you shouldn't be walking around on your crutches or something like that that's that's no point but when you're that if it's that minor injury you should be there i mean we got so angry a few years ago when um fabregas when he was captain and he was injured and on the last game of the season he went to the grand prix didn't he 
instead yeah. of being our last game of the season. You just think that sort of stuff, you know, I know it's more behind the scenes. They've got to start changing that a lot more than they have. They talk about all these non-negotiables and things like that. that they should really start on that sort of stuff, shouldn't they? Mm, today we could have done with the like of, likes of Gwendouzi to grab a few of those fucks around the neck and let him know he's there. I think that's what we missed in the central midfield. Mm. Someone to give it to them, not they were giving it to us. But it's done now. It's all over. The next game, we've got a week to our next game. Do you hold out much hope for the Southampton game? Because didn't they lost 6 nil at home <laughs> to Spurs Chelsea today? Well, you may not uh, have noticed this, but over the last few years, Southampton's sort of been our bogey side. Kind of. So, you know, not as bad like as it was, but yeah, so obviously they're going to try a lot harder, you know, this week, next week to, you know, show a reaction. So I don't think they're going to concede six against us, but possibly not. It's going to be, I think that'll be an awkward, tricky game, but we shall see, won't we? We will indeed. Um, right. What have you got planned for the rest of the day? Uh, anything interesting? Uh, I'm gonna have dinner, uh, maybe turn the Spurs game on for 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna cool. play Avengers on Twitch. Oh, uh, and if people want to come and watch you play that awful game on Twitch, what do they have to do? Uh, go on to Twitch and search for Nick Fights on Twitch, and I will be there on camera, and you can come and shout at me about football all you like. Very kind of you. And what I will be doing tonight is sorting out some more of this shite. There's 800 Pokemon cards I've got to get through. So I'm up to up to there. But I've also, these are the ones that I have done. Just chance ones. So they're all the ones that I've sorted out. Found out how much they're worth. And these are the ones that are so far. Half of these are on eBay. And I've sold about 10 so far. What's that? Are you collecting them? Yeah, I've got the first, like, four sets of Pokemon cards complete and almost mint condition, and apparently they're worth quite a bit of money, so please don't rob my house. Mm. Now's a good time to sell them, though, because you're not six anymore. You don't need them. Oh, I don't need them. I forgot I had them until I moved, and then I looked, my mate said, what are those? And then he was like, oh, that car's worth about 20 grand. I'm like, oh, dear. No, there's, no you're not. That's there's a lot of idiots on that. eBay asking way too much but i've now become an expert on how to sell pokemon cards something i, I didn't need um, well, that um what's his name that logan paul off the youtube who got beat up by boxes and stuff like yeah that idiot he was at the wrestlemania last week and he had yep. a pokemon card that he paid six yeah. million quid for around his neck and i'm like maybe you could buy some of mine could do anyway people if you're new and you like it Maybe subscribe. Consider subscribing. That's what people say. Don't. Just fucking do it. Uh, thumbs up. Tell your friends. Uh, download this. Put it on a DVD and put it through the letterbox of uh, your hundred nearest neighbours and put a fiver in of it and tell them to watch it and there's more money where that came from. I think that's how you do that. Yeah, I think that's legally uh, legally binding. Um, thank you very much, Nick. You have been, you've been delightful. Pleasure always be on, Danny. You know I'm always around. Uh, thank you very much to everybody in the chat who has put up with us to talking absolute nonsense for the last hour and a half. And we will be back on Wednesday or Thursday, I don't know which one, for, for the podcast where we'll be crying into our LucasAid bottles after dropping nine points out of 12. Gee, when you say it like that, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, oh, Rudy says goodbye. Noza says goodbye. And 90210 says thanks, guys, for the effort. Despite the circumstances and the familiar slide of loss forwards, of loss towards the end of the season, <laughs> yeah, the collapse is coming. Archangel says cheers, lads. Yeah, we couldn't have do this lot without you lot being there. Otherwise, it would just be like one of our WhatsApp groups where we're all fucking moaning at each other and uh, being mean to Chris. Right. Um, thank you very much, and goodbye. Now, what do I press? Do I, I nearly press leave studio. That would have been a fucking nightmare, wouldn't it? Uh, I don't know. This end podcast. Nick, say something funny. Uh, Granite Xhaka. Boom. <laughs>